This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to explain to your apprentice how a gas furnace operates. So we're going to be splitting this off into sections in order to help you translate this information to your apprentice coming up. The purpose of a forced air gas furnace is to take fuel gas such as natural gas or propane and you're burning it inside the furnace and you're taking combustion air for the flame here and you're exhausting it out this way. The whole point of this is you're rising the temperature of the air that you're circulating through the building. So you're pulling say for instance 70 degree air in through the return and there's a blower motor down here and the blower motor is pushing this air across the heat exchanger where the air is warming up and then it's getting pushed out through the supply duct at say about 120 degrees. So you're looking for a 50 degree increase in the air temperature across the gas furnace. So now I want to take you inside so we can look at the components. The size of the ductwork here is determined typically by the air conditioning uh, requirements for the building. So this up here is referred to as the evaporator coil and that's the indoor air conditioning part and then you have your outdoor condenser as well, and that is your air conditioner. And for air conditioning mode, you use just basically the blower motor and the controls. But anyway, uh, as far as the gas furnace is concerned, you have a return air either coming in this side of the furnace, this side of the furnace, or the bottom of the furnace. And typically these gas furnaces, and depends on the model, but typically they're multi-poise. So this thing could be upside down, could be horizontal left, it could be horizontal right, or vertical such as this right here. And so you always have your return air coming in here and your supply air coming out of the top. And the top is basically above this evaporator coil on the top right there. And you have an air filter. And the air filter's job is to stop any particulates such as dust and, and fur, like cat, cat hair or whatever, uh, from accumulating on the side of the heat exchanger, which is, which is right back here. And the heat exchanger, what, what the job of the heat exchanger is, is to separate the exhaust from the conditioned air. So you have the conditioned air flowing around the heat exchanger and then past the heat exchanger, past the evaporator coil and into the splayer duct. And so this air filter typically needs to get changed or checked at least every, every 30 days. And so this is just a fiberglass filter. It's a throwaway, it's a cheap version and it's not mounted in a very good spot. So you wanna have maybe a filter rack on the side with maybe a larger filter that has more surface area and you could use a pleated filter there to catch more dust. So, so anyway, that's the job of the, the filter. The filter also has another purpose and it, that is to stop the dust from accumulating on the bottom of the wet evaporator coil. So it's, it's really two functions, one for the heat exchanger and one for the evaporator coil. So once that evaporator coil gets clogged with, with dust, it's going gonna, it's gonna to limit the amount of airflow that's crossing over through this, this gas furnace. And then you're going to have problems with this furnace overheating. And so we'll get into that in a little bit. Now that we talked about the conditioned air, which is the return air and the supply air, we're going to look at the gas line. And so you know, I've taken this combustion chamber cover off so that we could see inside it right here. On these gas furnaces, you're either going to have natural gas or propane entering into this electrical gas valve, and there should be a manual on-off valve out here within serviceable distance of the front of this gas furnace. But this electrical gas valve is going to come set up typically from the manufacturer in a new unit as natural gas. And so you got to remember that natural gas enters into a gas furnace at about a quarter of a PSI. And so for reference, a car tire runs at about 45 PSI, so this is a very low pressure. And this electrical gas valve is going to have either a single stage or two stage, and it's going to lower that pressure down even lower before it enters into this combustion box. If this is propane entering into this electrical gas valve, it's going to run to the furnace at about a half of a PSI. So it's going to be a little bit higher of a pressure. And then this electrical gas valve is going to reduce that down, and it's going to then enter into this combustion box. And then we're going to get into our combustion air and our exhaust pipe next. In order for the combustion to take place, you're going to have a call for heat from your control board down here. And the first thing that's going to turn on is this inducer motor. This inducer motor is going to be pulling combustion air basically from this pipe into this area through the heat exchanger, or in this case, two heat exchangers. Then it's going to be pulling it into this uh, housing right here, and then it's going to be pushing the exhaust out to the outside of the building. So your combustion air pipe should be basically piped to the outside of the building. If you do have this cut off and it's pulling air from within the building, your building pressure is going to lower 
and basically it's going to turn your, your building into a vacuum and you're going to be pulling in outside air through all the cracks. So it's best to have this pipe piped to the outside for your air. And so what's happening here is you have your, your fresh air and you have your gas. And so coming through each of these little orifices, you're going to have your, your fuel gas gets mixed with your combustion air. It's going to enter into these little burner tubes and then it's going to get ignited right in the front of these burner tubes. So you're either going to have a hot surface igniter here that's going to be very uh, hot and, and red and orange or something like that. And that's what's going to ignite your gas or you're going to have a spark igniter. And the spark is going to be around 10,000 volts and the spark is going to jump to the ground across the, the mix of fuel gas and air and it's going to ignite it. So either one of those two, a spark igniter or hot surface igniter, and then your flame is going to travel along the face of these burners right here over to the other side, and you're going to have a flame proofing device over on the other side. So what's happening here is this inducer motor is pulling the exhaust downward. So you notice that your combustion box is up high. It doesn't just go from here into your exhaust and out of the building. Your inducer motor is pulling it through a, basically a snake of a heat exchanger in order for your conditioned air to go around the heat exchanger, uh, around the sides of the heat exchanger to absorb heat from it and to warm the air. And your exhaust, what's happening is it's lowering in temperature as it travels through uh, the primary and the secondary heat exchanger. Now the primary heat exchanger is going to be transferring heat from your exhaust vapor to the conditioned air, which is your return into your supply air. And your secondary heat exchanger is for when you've pulled so much heat out of the exhaust that the water vapor in the exhaust condenses. So you got to remember that the chemical process of uh, changing your, your fuel to a flame is what you're doing is you're creating water vapor there. And so that water vapor condenses in the secondary heat exchanger and that's how a 90% efficient furnace or higher is able to extract that extra 10% of heat compared to an 80% efficient furnace that only has that uh, primary vapor heat exchanger. And so then what happens is the, the exhaust coming out of your secondary heat exchanger uh, comes into this housing right here and then gets pushed out, out of your building. Now it's able to extract so much heat that the temperature of this exhaust is basically the temperature of your skin. So this, this pipe right here, which is your exhaust pipe, can uh, touch a combustible surface such as a piece of wood, like a two by four, something like that. If you put your finger on it while it's running, it's going to be the same temperature as your skin. As well, you're going to have a condensate drain, which you see this pipe right here. That's for the water that's condensed during the, the flame process. So that's going to be trickling uh, condensate water out of this furnace during heating mode. So I just want you to know that anytime that you walk up to a gas furnace and you see a PVC exhaust pipe, you know that you're going to be having to drain water out of the furnace during the operation. And so most people are used to draining water on the air conditioning side because you're removing humidity and condensing that water during air conditioning mode. But on a 90% efficient gas furnace, you're also going to have to drain the condensed water. But in this case, the water is coming from the chemical process of burning the fuel gas. So now I want to cover the efficiency of a gas furnace. And you may have heard of 80% efficient gas furnace, 90% or 95% efficient furnace. I want to tell you that you can know the efficiency of a gas furnace before you're even opening these covers right here. So if it has a PVC exhaust, you know that it's above 90% efficient. And most of the natural gas and propane furnaces that are out there now are 95% is the baseline. So it used to be just 90%, but now we have 92, 95, and then we have even higher up to say 98% efficient. Uh, and what that really means is that you're taking your fuel gas and you're converting that to heat. So you got to remember that the hotter the exhaust is that, that comes out of this furnace, the less efficient it is. So if this was an 80% efficient furnace, you're going to see a metal exhaust pipe because the metal exhaust pipe needs to be there to handle the heat of the exhaust. So if it was an 80% efficient furnace, it's not going to have PVC because it would just melt that PVC. Uh, so an 80% efficient furnace is going to have a metal exhaust pipe on the top and it's going to have an inducer motor. So you might see little tiny holes like in the face of this, of this shroud, little tiny ones because it's going to be pulling the combustion air from within the building into this burner area. It's not going to be a sealed burner. And, and you're going to have an, an inducer motor, but it's going to be a metal, uh, metal shroud inducer motor. So if it was just a big hole here in the front, 
Well, that is a cold air intake. And, and if it has a metal exhaust pipe and just a, a cold, a large opening right here, then that's a 60 or 70% efficient gas furnace. And that's taking cold air from the building and it's just putting it right in here to slow the exhaust, uh, exhaust gas from just flowing out uh, through the exhaust pipe too quickly. And so that's a 60 to 70% efficient uh, gas furnace. So you have a 60 to 70% efficient, 80% or 90%. You gotta remember that a 90% efficient ha has a primary heat exchanger for the exhaust vapor and a secondary heat exchanger for the condensed water. Whereas a 80% efficient furnace only has a single heat exchanger and a 60 to 70% efficient gas furnace, your burner area is gonna be down here and you're not gonna have as much of a snake in your heat exchanger because it just has to rise. So it's a natural draft, it's rising uh, as it's going through the heat exchanger uh, and out. And so that's how you tell the difference. So now that we covered the conditioned air, the return air, the supply air, the gas pressure, the combustion, the intake, the exhaust, the efficiency of a gas furnace, I wanna go over the electrical controls of a gas furnace. A gas furnace is gonna have safety devices. So there's a safety device right here and that's a flame rollout switch. So if the flames ever popped back, this switch is going to open up the electrical circuit. There is a heat sensing switch and it kind of looks like just like this right here and it sticks into the heat exchanger area and it's protecting the furnace from overheating maybe due to low airflow or something like that or over firing. And so, so you have these safety devices. You have another one right here in case this inducer motor housing gets too hot. And so here's another safety switch, but this is going to be in the normally open position when the furnace is just sitting still. But all of these other ones, this one, this one, and this one should all be closed. So the control board is going to be monitoring those things. And for each one of these individual components that you see in here, I have individual videos on them down in the description section below. So you can target those uh, specific components uh, with those videos. But basically over here you have your control wiring and these go to your thermostat. So you can have one that goes outside. Say, say this one goes outside, that one's gonna go to the outdoor air conditioner. The other one's gonna go to a thermostat that you have on the wall. So that's your user control. And you can turn the fan on, you can turn the heat on, or you can turn air conditioning on. And so based on what you're doing, and that's usually a 24 volt control. So you're sending 24 volt signal over to the thermostat and then it's just acting like a switch. And so depending on if you have 24 volts on the W wire, so if, if the power wire in the thermostat touches W for heat, and you get 24 volts now over here on the control board, well then the control board is gonna say, hey, we need to turn the heat on. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, it's gonna first always monitor your safety devices. Second, it's gonna then turn on the inducer motor. So starting with the sequence of operation, your inducer motor turns on, then the pressure switch closes the electrical connections because it it's actually has a tube right here. There's a tube here. This pressure switch is monitoring to make sure that the, the water level from this trap is not clogged and it has not, has not risen up above this tube right here. But this other pressure switch, there's two right here, this other pressure switch is coming over to the combustion box. And it's making sure that the pressure in this combustion box is lowering. And so that's gonna make sure that this inducer motor actually is running. So first things first, the inducer motor runs, then the pressure switch proves that the inducer motor is running, then after that, the hot surface igniter turns cherry red in here, then your gas valve opens up the, the gas flow uh, for the whatever stage it's on, single stage or two stage. It's gonna open up the stage of gas and it's going to ignite because it's gonna go past that hot surface igniter or it's gonna have a spark ignition. Then the, the flame is gonna travel across the burner, tube faces over here, and the flame proving device is gonna verify that the flame is intact. And so in this case, there's the flame rectification process where you have high voltage being sent into this flame rod into the flame and the flame is rectifying it from alternating current to direct current and on the ground, which is actually this wire right here, the control board is, is getting back a small DC microamp signal to verify that the flame is intact. So after the control board knows that there's a flame, it's going to have a timing mechanism, basically it's waiting to turn on the blower motor down here. So you have your, 
your large blower motor is going to suck air from the return and it's going to push it across the heat exchanger. So, but first it wants to wait and make sure that the heat exchanger warms up. So in this case, you have your primary heat exchanger and your secondary heat exchanger. And so remember that your secondary heat exchanger is going to be at a lower temperature than your primary. And that's why it's the first one that the air is going to cross through. Then it's going to cross through the hot, hotter heat exchanger, which is back here. And then your air is going to come up into your supply and then it's going to get distributed through the building. So it's waiting maybe say 30 seconds for the heat exchangers to warm up. Then it's going to take the, the conditioned air and it's going to blow that across the heat exchangers. And then at that point, you're maintaining about a 50 degree temperature rise between this return air and where the supply air exits the system at. And, and then it's going to do that until the thermostat uh, is reading a temperature at the same temperature that you set it at. So it's reached the set temperature. And then this furnace, what's going to happen is after you've reached the set temperature by the user, your gas right here is going to shut off. But your inducer motors can continue to run because there's still exhaust in that uh, heat exchanger area. And then what's going to happen is this blower motor is going to continue to run. Your blower motor may run for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, depending on the, the setting that you set it at. There's a dip switch typically down on the control board. And what it's doing is it's lowering the temperature on the heat exchanger. So you wouldn't want this blower motor to shut off immediately because this heat exchanger is red hot, you know. And so it's also getting that extra efficiency out since you've already taken the, the effort to heat up the heat exchanger. We're going to push that heat into the building. And then after that, the blower motor is going to shut off and, and that's that. And so it's not going to turn back on again until your control board has a signal from the thermostat to turn it back on in heating mode. So now that we've covered the operation of the gas furnace, I just want to point out a few things that need to be corrected. And one is the filter. So we're going to need to put a filter rack outside of the furnace. And you see that this, this filter, the location is not really in a good spot. You can't pull it out easy because this condensation line tube's in the way as well. You're going to have some of the air traveling around the filter instead of through the filter. As well, you see there must be a leaking tube here on the condensate trap. You see there's a bunch of rust down there. You can see that the, the flame must not be burning very well. You see there's a black uh, sediment right there from the combustion process. And so that may have to do with the gas pressure or the combustion air. So that needs to be checked as well. Uh, but I hope this video helped you understand the operation here. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of free resources such as articles, quick tips, calculators, quizzes. And so we have all that stuff as well as the videos down in the description section below. So I hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.